to you today about um, styles and themes in Android. It's not a very technical talk, um, but it is probably, it is one of the things that you will find uh, most useful, I think. Uh, I think you will find it most useful. Um, that's me. Uh, feel free to uh, um, give me an email, send me an email or something like that if you have questions after this uh, presentation. As Sasha said, this stuff will be all up on the web, so this captures it. Um, by all means, send email. <coughs> that tiny little thing over there, so I didn't know what size these slides were going to be, but the tiny little thing over there is the agenda for my talk. So I want to talk, start with, with just a couple of basics, and then I want to introduce attributes, um, just so we're, you probably all know about them, but just so we're all on, this, on the same page. And then I want to move up to styles, and finally to themes. <coughs> and why am I doing this? There are, there are two reasons. I have two goals in mind. Um, the first one is that I want to separate design from coding. Um, I would very much like it that um, a designer um, could make my code look beautiful, make my UIs look nice, because I sure as blazes can't. Um, and <coughs> I would like that, that, um, that same guy to stay out of my code whenever possible. I would love it if his making changes to my application um, um, didn't have caused me to go back and write new code each time I needed to to update for uh, update the appearance. The other thing I want is shrink wrappable widgets. Um, I don't know if you did any of you are any of you um, veterans of uh, ActiveX, Visual Basic, those kinds of things. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that Microsoft totally had right was the community of, the, the community of widget developers. There were a billion widgets. People would put together little, there must have been 47,000 different calendar widgets alone. People would write widgets, package them up, and then either give them away or sell them. And it made the platform move forward at an incredible rate. It, um, things got prettier and prettier. It got possible to make things prettier and prettier. It also got th possible to make things junkier and junkier. But for the most pe part, people avoided that. Um, unfortunately, that's just really hard to do in Android. Yeah? Oh, I mean, you just answered. I was going to ask you, is, what do you mean by, with the, like, you know, we have widgets natively in Android, but... Yes, try to make your own. Right. So is it like... Action Bar Sherlock or those kind of So Action Bar Sherlock is, a, is exactly the example that I was going to bring up. Action Bar Sherlock succeeds for exactly two reasons. Action Bar Sherlock su succeeds, first of all, because the guy who wrote it is willing to give it away. It, he, he hands you the source code, right? And it wouldn't work otherwise. And the second thing is that it's big enough project, it's a big enough piece of code, so that it's worth making a library to your Android application. If I wrote a calendar, if I wrote a calendar widget, there's no way I'd get you to, to add, you know, the 37 or 80 different library projects to your Android project, all, all 30 of them, you know, there just to include one widget each. It would be crazy. It would be a, an engineering nightmare. It would be a, a pain in the neck to maintain. And that's not what people are going to do. Action Bar Sherlock, though, succeeds because for, for those two reasons. He's willing to give it away, and he's, uh, it, it's a big enough piece of code so that, nobody, so that people are willing to add it. It's like the one library project they have. Some of these I'm going to have to shrink back down, but for the time being, let's make it a little bigger. If you've seen, if you've seen any Android program, if you've written, who, who here has written an Android program? OK, so you all know what this does, right? There's nothing magic about it. It exactly replaces code that does exactly what you'd expect. It creates a new instance of text view, and then it initializes it with a bunch of parameters. There's nothing tricky about this. <coughs> um, first of all, it's not necessary to do it this way. You could do it with code. Um, and second of all, even if you did it with code, you'd probably do it almost exactly the same way that Android does it. 
is it reads these things and just executes the same code that you would. Um, the other thing that, that is important to understand for this talk is that most of this stuff comes from a, most of this stuff has nothing, has very little to do with runtime, Android's runtime. Most of the stuff, the way you encounter it, is through a program called AAPT, right? So, so it is true that these, that the layouts that you build get reparsed once they, they um, once, once they get bundled into the into your application, into your APK, they get reparsed and, uh, re well, turned into to view trees. On the other hand, the way you will encounter these things is with AAPT. When you see an error, it's AAPT that's giving it to you. When you can't figure out <laughs> whether to use a namespace or not, it's because you can't figure out what AAPT is doing. Um, it is surprisingly written in C, C, half C, half C++. It uses XPAT as the parser. It is bizarrely complex. It is a huge program. And, um, and it, it takes your XML resources, everything that's in the assets directory and everything that's in the XML directory, and it bundles it all up into stuff that goes in the APK. It's the thing that um, it surely knows about uh, resource qualifiers. It surely knows about what's in the manifest. It knows all of that stuff. If you need to research this stuff, it's AAPT that you're going to have to read. So where do predefined attributes come from? And you'll see in a minute, there's a different, there's another kind, right? So um, the, the, the attributes that you use in your Android program, um, you'll find them documented in the various subclasses of view. Um, if you look at one of these, for instance, Here they are. They're all, it, uh, Android, um, Android does a very good job of documenting these things. Okay, the ones that, that they want you to know about, they're all sitting right there, and how, how to use them is pretty well explained. It's, it's, it's not bad stuff. Um, where are they defined? They're defined in the source, in the, at, this adders file, adders.xml. <coughs> and, um, these things are designed for extension. What happens is that each view parses the entire pile of attributes that it is given, and it ignores the ones that it doesn't understand. So for instance, a text view will parse off the ones typically begin with text, but it won't touch the ones that begin with layout, and the view will parse the ones that begin with layout. So each guy parses his attributes and then calls his superclass and the superclass passes his attributes. The result of this, of course, is that if you misspell something, it will silently go, go ignored. It will be silently ignored. On the other hand, that's what AAPT does. AAPT has, um, when it parses your XML, it uh, verifies it, and it guarantees that, the, that all of these attributes are in the namespace. So actually, if you look here, you will find attributes that you actually can't use. And the reason is that Android has a whitelisted API. The whitelist is in this file here. If what happens is that this, that, that XML file gets turned, among other things, <coughs> into a class called r.adders. And r.adders, like every other um, Java API in Android, um, r.adders is subject to whitelisting. And unless it's been whitelisted here, you can't see it. And as the tiny little note down here says, so, so I can get this out of the way before you ask me, um, no, I don't understand why that makes it invisible in XML. So that explains why you can't get at it from Java. But I spent um, many, I, I spent a fair amount of time trying to sort through AAPT on this, and I can't actually figure, I have not yet figured out why it is that these things are illegal in XML as well. 
but they are. It's the same, it is probably the same control. It is probably a hide or a public um, declaration that hides them. So, suppose we side, decide to package a widget. We've, we've written our new widget and we want to package it up and we want it to be configurable. We want folks out there to be able to configure it. Well, you'll actually see a fair amount of this. The way that people, one of the ways that people will do this is they create an abstract parent class with this huge honking constructor and you create a subclass of their class which doesn't do anything except initialize all the values in the constructor. Okay, this, is a, this, was, this has been a very common way of, of um, customizing widgets in Android. You'll see a lot of code that looks like this. And it's fairly awful. It's a fairly bad idea. What's well, better? Use custom attributes. So let's add new attributes that our view can read. Our view looks at these attributes and configures itself. That means that the person writing the layout, the person writing the XML, simply add, needs to add new attributes to your view, your custom view, and your view gets its, gets its configuration the same way other views get their configuration from that, that list of, of attributes. It's a three-step process, therefore a waltz. So the way you do this is you create a new, direct, a new file down here in the values directory called adders. Hmm. <laughs> and And you define some attributes. You put them in a declare stylable element. And within the declare stylable element, you simply name the attributes. So the name piece is the name of the attribute, and the format, format describes what that attribute is going to look for as its <coughs> argument, as its value. Okay, so the attribute is the thing that, is, that follows the name, and the type of the value is the, thing, is the thing described by reference. And that one that's missing, the one that's got a quote quote there won't work. I don't know what's up with that, but that won't work. The, the bad news here is that, um, is that you, you might think that this tag view here, this guy, is a namespace. <clears throat> and that your tags are inside that namespace? Unfortunately, it's not true. All of the attributes that uh, are used in your application have to be uh, unique. If you think about it for a second, you can see how that's going to work. They're all turned into r.adder.something, right? They're all, they're all going to be turned into Java names, and those Java names have to be unique. And those Java names don't include this thing up here. So this part has to be unique. So you end up with these bizarre names. Okay. So this gets you the attribute, right? Now you have an attribute declared. The things out there in the format section, they're, as far as I can tell, they're completely undocumented. Um, there are 10 of them. They're lift, listed in tiny letters on the edge of the screen there. Um, they're actually, they're defined right here in this file, resource table.cpp, <laughs> like that. That's the, that's the definition of those attributes types. Um, 
When you build the attribute types, when you build the, the type of an attribute, when you set its format, you can or together several attributes. They're, they're bits, so you can or them together. They have bit values, so you can or them together. You can, say, for instance, say that this is dimension or a reference to a dimension. In fact, it turns out that that's usually redundant. And in fact, you will probably never use an or. It doesn't make any sense to say that this is either a color or a dimension. That's just nonsense. But what does make sense is to say that it, it is either a color or a reference. But it turns out that, that the code for color, for picking up a color, now handles references. So you don't need to say or reference. Okay? There are some places where you will want to say just reference, but you almost never need to say, uh, need to or it in. Uh, pay attention to the um, syntax of enum. Enum is the way you do, for instance, true-false in this case, or styles. Suppose you wanted to, to um, suppose you wanted serif, sans serif, you know, um, and monospaced fonts. You could do it with one of these enums. But the way you do it is with the attribute tag is of type enum, and then you just include the <coughs> include enums inside it. This is uh, one of the more important slides here. Um, there's no way to digest this, I suppose, in one, in one reading, but it is the code for parsing an attribute. Let me see here a second. So there are, there are um, a couple of important points here that I will show you on the next page. One, <laughs> three, and four. What happened to two? There was a two. I know there was. So, um, so I'll switch back and forth between these two slides as I explain them. So the first, thing is, the first thing is to be sure to call your super constructor. As I said, it is, it is essential that the whole point of this is that you parse the attributes you know about, and then you call the super constructor to let it parse the things it knows about, and so on until you get back to view. Okay? And view, I mean, it is essential that view runs, its code looks very like this, and it's essential that it runs, otherwise your layout won't happen. Right? And, and your, your, um, your object won't have a minimum size and it won't work at all. Okay? So it's essential that you call the super constructor. So the second thing is that it is a good idea to get this typed array. Oh, that's what happened. It got, it's way out here, I'll betcha. It's just, um, it's just, the two is right about here on the wall. So, <clears throat> um, so you actually can, this attribute set that you're passed here, you actually can simply parse the attribute set. There's n no reason not to do it. It's unnecessarily complicated to do that though because um, styles haven't been applied yet and references haven't been followed yet. If you, if you use this obtain styled attributes, then all the styles get applied. So things that used to not have values now have values. And things that used to be references, that is things that had at signs in them. You all know what at signs are, right? References to other objects, to other, other bits of your, your other resources. So things that are at signs have already been resolved. Okay, so definitely this is the way to do it. Get the typed array from the, the attribute set. And once you've got that, you just walk through them and case on each one. Run these cases. Okay? And you'll recognize this. That's Java for this. Okay, so this got turned into r.style dot that thing. And here it is right here r.stylable, et cetera. OK. So 
So you pick them out and set the values in your, in your object based on these things, and you're good to go. Typed array has, has uh, methods that correspond pretty much exactly to the 10 types. So you can get a color, you can get a dimension. There are a couple of extra things. There's pixel, pixel offset. And for instance, if you want to get a drawable, you declare it as a reference, and then you get the drawable from the reference. The last bit there is be sure that this doesn't scroll off your screen. Right? Be sure to recycle the typed array when you're done with it. A typed array is a big thing, and it won't go away until you recycle it. You need to tell the garbage collector it can have it back. Um, I will suggest a style for doing this. So the style I suggest is that you have a, um, a stack variable, a local variable, whose name corresponds to the attribute, and you set it to the default value that you choose for the attribute. So right here, I set this value, this variable, I give it the default value that I want this thing to have. Then down here, I actually get the value from the XML in the case statement. I actually get the value, but I pass the value in, the default value, to start with. This, it, it, sets all, it puts all the setting of default values together in one place, all of the parsing together in another place, and then finally set your final variables the final variables in your class. So this is all done in the constructor. Set the final variables for your class as the last thing. So there, once again, it's another waltz. There are so many things are. It, there are three steps. First of all, set the default values. Then get the actual values if they exist. And finally, set the finals that are the, the uh, class invariants. If there are a lot of these things, you might want to consider using a builder. Okay, you, might, you might consider pulling this whole piece out, making it into a builder, and just getting back a config object from your parser. Still has to happen in the constructor, though. Are there any questions about this? This is almost the end of styles. Is this making, making, making sense? Is this all plausible? Custom attributes, yes? Ah, this one. So it's impossible to see this, but what this is is uh, in, the, in the values. So res, let me do it this way so that my videographer doesn't kill me afterwards. In res, in the res directory, in the values directory inside that, there's a new thing called adders, adders.xml. And it's the thing that contains the declare styleable. So then you just use them. There's only one tricky part, and that is that you need to set the namespace that they're in. You need to tell Android, you need to tell, essentially what you're doing here is telling AAPT where to find these custom attributes. This is always your package name, always. Regardless of whether these things are defined in a library file, in, in a library project, or something like that, use your package name here, okay? So it always says HTTP colon slash slash, yeah. I don't even know what res auto does. Sorry, I have no clue. Sometimes you gotta put res auto there. Hmm. Yeah. Um, the only thing I've seen along those lines is that <coughs> um, even within a project, Eclipse will for, will, Eclipse can't, Eclipse doesn't follow references. Eclipse doesn't know how to follow these references. 
If you make a, a reference to something here and then change the thing at the far end of the reference, Eclipse will not update stuff. It will not run the, the well, it runs AAPT again. It will not update uh, views and things like that. It will not redraw the image editor, the layout editor. Um, the only thing I can imagine is that, so when, when you have a library project, it is, AAPT is in fact sucking in the resources from that project and building them in the local project. And that's the only thing I can think of. But no, I've never used it. Is it, do you, have you used it with Action Bar Sherlock? Um, I've used it when I pulled my old app into uh, a library project and tried to use custom attributes that way. It's a new property, it's a new mechanic as of like R17. Hmm, um, yeah. Haven't met it. Yeah. Haven't met it. Cool. Um, so be sure you get the, be sure you get the, um, be sure you get the namespace right. This says that I now have a, a namespace called tag view right here. The namespace is tag view. And as I said, this part is completely predefined. You must, what this has to be is everything up to res slash and then exactly your package name from your manifest. Once you do that, you can use the, you can use these the namespaces, and um, AAPT will understand your, it will do all of, everything it needs to do. It will do everything right. It will, for instance, not let you type, put a, a color here. It will not let you put a reference to a, um, a drawable here, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so AAPT will parse this correctly once you get that namespace right. Okay. Yeah. So when you put clarity attributes, you gave them a name, like the block that had name. Is that being used by anything? Or? Yeah. Yeah. That name shows up here. I'm sorry. That's right. Uh, so the question is, the question is, if you, let's see, when you, when you define the attribute, the attribute set has a name. The styled attributes have a name. Does that, is that name used anywhere? And let's see. It is, but you know, I can't remember where. Maybe it's not. I don't know. I don't know. That's very, that, you know, I could swear I remember writing that down someplace and I don't recall where. Uh, I mean, using that, having those, ha seeing the unpleasant tag view dot tag view dot tag view dot tag view dash something but I don't recall where sorry about that there are only two places that you use those things one is the Java when you're parsing them and the other is here so I'm think despite my recollection that I have used them I don't see them here and this works so perhaps you just don't um, yeah. Okay, that's it for, for uh, creating your own attributes. You now have a way to, to initialize, to let anyone who wants to inc include the code for your custom widget and then customize it from the layout instead of from, uh, you know, by, by creating a subclass or something like that. All right? Any questions about this? Any questions that I can answer? about this? Somebody throw me a softball? All right. So let's talk about styles. Styles are next. <coughs> styles are simply collections of attributes. So it's, it's really simple. It's really straightforward to, to create a style. Um, you simply translate Android colon attribute equals value into so that the attribute goes, it becomes the, pro, the value of the name attribute and the value becomes the contents of the element, all right? And then you apply it by saying, apply the style. Notice that style doesn't have a namespace. Pretty weird, but it doesn't.
So here's a basic use of a style. So this is a text view in which the text size is 64 SP and it's green. And we simply separate that into a style that says big green. So the style is a reference down here to this style, which is in a different file. Okay, so the, everything above, the two sections above are in layout files. And the section below is in a style.xml file. The style is a resource. It lives in a resource element. And it's the big green style. And it just, as I said, all of the, um, all of the attribute names become values of the name attribute. And then the value of the attribute turns into the contents of the element. Okay. Styles inherit from one another. This gets you CSS, or uh, this, has, this ha doesn't have the power of CSS, but it at least starts. It's at least, it's at least in the right general direction. Um, there are two ways to inherit from another style. And inheritance works the same way it does everywhere. Um, you can inherit from another style. You can either add to it or you can override it. So if you inherit from some other style and replace some value in that style with some other value, what you get is the most recent, right? So if, for instance, green, so big sets the text size to 64 SP. If, green set, if big green set the text size to 32 SP, the size would be 32 SP. Android takes these things um, in order of proximity. So the most recent, uh, the, the lowest child in the tree wins. And furthermore, if there are, if there are specific constraints on the, on the view itself, those beat out any style. Okay, so, so the, the, the attributes given here on the view always beat the style. And the, the nearest child always wins. Can you repeat that? The yeah. So, so big green always beats great big. Okay? The lowest child, the, the youngest child always wins. And even the youngest child gets beat by, by attributes specified on the view. So I could say big green here and override this with a text size of 128. And regardless of what the previous two guys said, that's what I'd get. Yeah. And you only, only inherit from one parent? That's right. There's only one parent. They're not doing cascading Yeah. Even if you give them a name and, and a parent tag? Yes. One. There can be only one. Um, the second way to inherit is with the parent tag. And we'll see that that's, that's uh, the parent attribute. We'll see that that's important in just a minute. Because, <clears throat> well, as I said, the, the, the win here is obvious, right? So th among other things, um, the designer now gets to control, can set up standard appearances for your application can set up a limited number of, of standard appearances, standard colors, standard text sizes, standard weights, all of that kind of stuff. And you just apply them in your code. And not only that, but when she ch changes her mind and decides to do it a different way, then it, there's not, no change necessary in the code. That's the best thing. Factoring out makes the styles less brittle. If you decide to change the style in one place, it changes everywhere. Whereas if the styles are embedded in each view in the layout, changing one, I mean, you have to go through and find them all. And finally, most important, like any other resource, a style resource is subject to resource qualifiers. You all know what resource qualifiers right, are, right? They're those, the things after the hyphen in the names of the, the these things. Hard to see, I suspect. Oh, no, they're just fine. But these things, the, the thing after the hyphen here is a resource qualifier. And it says that this, is that this set of resources is only applicable 
under these conditions. For instance, the one we just looked at says those set of resources are only applicable if you're using version 11 of Android or greater. So you can set up resources, you can set up styles that are only applied depending on whether, you, that are only applied if you're in landscape mode or only applied if you're on a big device. You can make your, your application look good whether it's on a TV or whether it's on my phone just by using styles. This is, this, is, this is pretty significant. The most common way to use styles is to inherit from the Android styles and override them. So if you want your button, if you don't want to figure out what your button should look like from top to bottom, override the button style, Android's button style, so inherit from it and change a piece of it and then apply it to your code. You can't inherit from a, an Android style. Basically, what it is is the namespace. You can't inherit from something outside your namespace by using the dot syntax. In order to inherit from something outside your namespace, you need to use parent, use the parent attribute. The dot trick is actually fairly new. I don't know when it was introduced, but it's, it's fairly new. Um, a, a quick aside, if you haven't re met resource drawables, you really should. There's probably nothing you could do that makes your app, that customizes your app quicker than, than having um, cool looking buttons. And you can do that almost for free with a resource drawable. These things are pretty neat. Um, this is a piece of a resource drawable or a piece of a button definition. An actual button definition would be um, a layered resource, which, which um, was composed of several rectangles, all very similar. And these rectangles, these similar rectangles, would have different highlight states. They'd represent the different highlight states for the button. So you can build a resource entirely out of XML that'll just make your, make your application look a lot better. Great idea. So I said a slide ago, two slides ago there, that one of the best things to do is to inherit your styles from Android styles. So if you decide to do that, how do you know what the Android styles are? How do you find them? Well, it's a lot like finding the attributes. They're all defined in r.style, or they're, they're described in the documentation in r.style.html. Those are the ones you can see. They're defined there in, in the styles.xml, and as usual, their visibility is controlled the same way everything else is. That's a class, unless those things are visible. The r.styles class, unless the um, API file down there makes those members of the style class visible, you can't have them. There's one in particular that's real popular called uh, widget.button.transparent that everybody knows is there and everybody would like to use, and you can't, can't have it. And again, I don't know why these aren't visible in XML, but they're not. So the last piece, the last thing, are there any questions about styles? Do you, I mean, you see what a style is? A style is simply the way to take a bunch of attributes from an, a view object and to bundle them up as a style and then to apply them. Yeah. I don't believe they are at all. I don't believe that, yeah, I don't believe that you can style them at all. It, 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 it turns out that you can use themes on them, and I'll show you that in, a, in just a second, but I don't believe you can style them at all. So that would be like question mark theme, refer theme references? Precisely, okay. precisely. <laughs> so a theme, you'll, you'll see a lot out there, you'll see people talk about th themes as if they were styles or a collection of styles or something like that. I urge you not to think of them that way. I urge you to think of, of a theme as, um, <laughs> as a function dispatch table. A, th a theme is a collection of definitions. It's a, bunch of, it's a bunch of pointers to things. 
Um, as I say, a dispatch table isn't a bad way to think of it. This is a tiny segment from theme hollow. And you can see what's defined here. Those things, all of those, all of those names here, each of these names, there's, there's no way to tell these names apart. They don't have type. These names are simply references. But there are references to two styles, a reference to an enum, and a reference to a drawable. And they all look the same. Um, I personally find it incredibly confusing that these are defined as styles. Not only that, but so does AAPT. Um, we'll see that in a second. So the thing about style is that it allows you to backfit the appearance of Android, of, of bits of Android. I have a quick demo to do here. It's really fast. Oh, maybe I don't. I have a quick demo to do in just a few minutes because when we change screen size, I turned off the emulator. So it'll take a month of Sundays to get that running again. So <coughs> themes, Android, Android sets the styles of things that it puts on the screen, things over which you know, have no control. It sets them according to the theme. If you assign a theme to an application or to a component in that application, Android honors that theme while it is drawing all of the objects that are under that component's control. You can assign themes to, as I said, to the application or to each activity. You can assign different activities, different themes. So for instance, if you have an introduction page that you want to look one way, um, want it to have a, an action bar and to look like a normal Android application, and then you push the start button and it goes into game mode where it's using the full screen, you can control those things simply by assigning two different themes to the two different activities. It works great. What I want to show you here is this application. Here's the base activity. It's called activity zero. Here's activity one. It does nothing new. It is simply, its sole reason for existence is that it's different from activity two. Okay, there are two activities which use exactly the same code, right? When I run them, however, This one is green, and notice that the background on this is green. The background on the menu bar is green. And if I push two, the background on the menu bar is purple. That's because I've set two different themes here on the two different activities. Theme one, App theme one is applied to activity one, and app theme two is applied to activity two. And if you look in styles, the way those two themes differ is the background. But the most important thing, the thing that I want to make sure you, you see, is that I am not only affecting the background of my program, of my bits, of bits of the view that I control, I'm also affecting bits that Android controls, okay? The background for these pieces of the menu bar, this, 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 and this, all of those pieces of the menu bar <coughs> were affected simply by setting the theme. That's pretty good, okay? That's pretty good. That means, for instance, that you now have a prayer of dealing with the gingerbread honeycomb divide, where Android got rid of the of the menu and put in the action bar. You can simply have different themes. And in fact, that's exactly what action bar Sherlock does. These two different themes affect your look different way and they're controlled by resource qualifiers. The same resource qualifier that, 
the same resource qualifier that I just showed you a few seconds ago that shows V11 or V14, those can deal with the menu, with the action bar. They can set up the appearance of the action bar, whereas the, the views that are in versions older than that don't. So, if you want to, if you want to, ref right, so if you want to refer to a member of a theme, okay, and this is important down here, this sentence is very important. This is, this is the place that you can confuse AAPT. So, if you want to refer to a member of a theme. So in this case, we know that the theme defined an attribute called button style. We know that that's part of the theme. If that's part of the theme, I can refer to it, it is a style. It is a style that is piece of the, a piece of the current theme. And I can refer to it as I did right there with the question mark syntax. This only works for things that are pieces of themes. It, it doesn't work for styles. And by the way, Android play, plays pretty fast and loose with these attribute names. There are plenty of attribute names that are both style attributes and theme attributes. When they are both, what's happening is you're getting the one from the theme. And that works. If you are simply referring to a style attribute, this will compile, but it will not run. It, at startup time, you'll get, um, you'll get a, a kind of an odd error that says that, for instance, that's not a style. That the thing that is pointing to there is not a style, even though you know full well that it is. Only use question marks with themes. Themes with resource qualifiers are incredibly powerful. This gives you almost everything you need. You can make your application look completely different, right down to the stuff that doesn't belong to you. Okay? Right down to the appearance of the action bar. You can change the appearance of the action bar depending on what version of Android you're on. And there's just one more thing we need to do to tie this all together, and that is, Way back at the beginning, I showed you how to create custom attributes for your widgets. Well, what you want to do is you want to style your custom widget based on the version of Android you're on. Okay? This is the big deal. This is the payoff. Okay? So what I want to do now is I want to say my tag view, when it's running on version 11, looks one way. And my, or bet, more, more useful, let's say. I want my tag view to ha use um, a big font when it's running on a TV and a small font when it's running on somebody's phone. All right? So what I want is I want a theme that can style my custom attribute. So how do you do that? Well, it takes three things. First of all, we have to go back to that adders file, and we have to define some new attributes. These are attributes that are used nowhere else except as references in that theme. The next thing we need to do is create a parent theme that defines the attributes. I'll show you these things in code in just a minute. And finally, you use, you use the question mark syntax throughout your code to refer to the, con refer to the style. Okay? So now, <coughs> now your tag, my custom tag, no longer, it is no longer styled using a style. It is styled indirectly using a reference through a theme. And I'll show you how that works. So first of all, here in attributes, I create two names that are not attributes I expect to be used anywhere. These are going to become theme 
just theme members. Next, in my style, I create a theme. And this is just the default. This is the standard one. The def it uses these two new attributes. And notice that in this file, I do not have this. It will not work if you try to do this with a namespace. You must do this without a namespace. Right? There's no namespace here. And there's no namespace declared up here. But I create a new theme. And the theme has, uses these two new attributes. And the attributes refer to styles. So now I have an indirect reference to the style that I want to use. Now, in my layout, I refer to the style as the member of the theme. Once again, notice, no namespace. If you try to new, use a namespace, it won't work. Now, because this is an indirect reference, when I change the theme, when I create new themes for new versions of, of Android or old versions of Android or different screen layouts or whatever, since this is an indirect reference, I'll get whatever style is declared in the theme. That, that does it, okay? N now you're pretty much home free. So you can custom, you can build your custom widget, style it with custom attributes, assign, create sets of custom attributes that belong for, as styles, and then assign those custom attributes to the single theme and reference the styles indirectly through the theme and you get this. So these things, this for instance, is a text view, but its style is controlled by header style. And header style is this guy down here, or that. And I still don't get my shrink-wrapped widgets. I want shrink-wrapped widgets. Thanks a lot.